and welcome to Marshmallow Reads. I'm Marcy and today I'm going to tell you about a few of the books I read in January. It's been a minute since I've recorded so this is gonna be fun. First up I have A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Eilin. Look at this cover. <laughs> it is absolutely gorgeous. It's perfect. It's amazing. I love it. I love it very much. When I first saw this on NetGalley, I was so excited. I immediately requested it. So I did read it as an e-arc through NetGalley. So I thank you very much for that. This is a story about a girl entering this magical tea competition to help out her family. And it's fantastic. I really liked how the story basically jumps into the magical tea competition, like at the 10% mark. It gives the reader the necessary background information and scene setting in a tight and entertaining package right from the start. And then the rest of the story is similarly quick paced and that was such a plus for me. But I will say it did read as very YA to me, which isn't necessarily a pro or a con, but I know for some people that can be a bit off-putting. The main character, Ning, feels like a real and complicated young adult. At the start of the story, she feels very guilty for the death of her mother and her sister's current like severe illness. So it's not her fault what happened, but she still feels very responsible for it. The stakes for this competition are already really high, but the stakes for Ning feel extra high because of her family situation. So when Ning realizes that she's at a greater disadvantage due to her gender and socioeconomic status, it hurts that much more. I was not 100% sold on the relationship between Ning and her love interest, but I am interested in seeing how their relationship progresses in the next volume. On the other hand, I was immediately hooked by the relationship between the princess and her handmaiden. Like, okay, can someone please, just, just real quick, please write a fanfic between Ryu and Jen? Like, <laughs> I need that very much, like right now. I would very much like to see more of these two in the next book, and I hope, I hope they're there. Oh man, I I absolutely love this magic system. Like I knew I would like it because it's like magical tea, duh. But I didn't expect it to like it this much, especially towards the end of the book when you get to see some really cool examples of what this tea magic can do, especially like when you're fighting someone, you know? Oh my God. And then the ending, the ending. I literally screamed, what? as I was flipping to the last page because I did not expect it to end on such a cliffhanger. Like this was a solid four out of five stars for me, especially for being like the beginning of a new series. I can't wait to get my hands on A Venom Dark and Sweet, the sequel that I believe is coming out in August, somewhere around there, I'm not sure. Next up is The Rebound by Katherine Welsh. This was another e-arc I read through NetGalley. So thank you very much one more time. What? would you do when your life just completely falls apart? Well, in this case, you move back home and reconnect with your old, but now really hot, childhood friend. <laughs> yeah, this is a romance. This felt like a pretty standard romance novel to me. Like the main character is a high achieving business woman <laughs> and she just lost her job and fiance and is kind of at a loss of what to do. So she ends up moving from the bustling New York City apartment that she was living in to the much more quiet and quaint Clonard, Ireland, her hometown. And Abby, our main character, is not on the best of terms with her sister where she's living with her um but she's she's trying her best as well as trying to find herself another job but it's not all bad abby ends up hitting it off with her old pal luke and it's honestly pretty cute <sighs> but of course like so many romance novels there were some communication issues that popped up that made no sense and it really felt like they were only there to create a fake tension and that's the part I hate. It, it, I hate the fakeness of it. Like when Abby and Luke first kiss, Abby starts freaking out mid makeup session because she feels like she's betraying a friend of hers who also has a crush on Luke but like girl you're already kissing him. Finish kissing him. Like ugh. <laughs> I've heard of the trend of romance books either ending with a sex scene or a baby and 
I have a strong preference for which one I'd like to see, and unfortunately this book, uh, yeah, it, it ended up with a lot of baby stuff <laughs> and very little spicy things at all. Like, it, it was not what I wanted. Like, it had a decent start and a decent middle, but it just, it ended up not really being for me. And that's okay, like maybe other readers and other romance enjoyers would like this one, but I thought it was just okay and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This story follows four Native American men years following a disturbing event in their youth. They thought that this event was behind them, in the past for them, but they end up in a struggle for their lives because of it. It is a slow burn tale of revenge, as well as a commentary on modern life for Native Americans. And as I've seen discussed in other books in this past year, modern life for Native Americans goes hand in hand with horror, unfortunately. Uh, in this case, this group of young men dismissed important parts of their culture and traditions, which is what white supremacy wants, you know? That is what they've been trying to do to these communities ever since the white man first colonized this land. And what happens? Well, for these four young men, they must pay for their transgressions and <laughs> oh boy, do they pay. And it doesn't just affect them. These consequences reach out into their families and their friends. It is a communal pain. Oh yeah, very good, very spooky. I gave this one a four out of five stars. And then the last book I'm gonna talk about today, Spin by Robert Charles Wilson. Oh, I finished this book on January 10th, but uh, even then I knew that this could very well be my favorite book of the entire year. Like, I, I honestly don't know how another book is going to come along and top this one, honestly. Like, yeah, it's, it's that good, at least to me. And let me explain. Okay, so this book was originally published in 2006, but oh, Damn, does it hit hard in 2022. The edition I have is the Tor Essentials edition published in November of 2020. And something special about this edition is that it has an introduction written by John Scalzi. He's an author known for uh, The Old Man's War and Lockin. And that introduction was written in April of 2020. Yeah, just barely into the start of the pandemic. And it was surreal reading this time capsule perspective being almost two years from that time period. And it was also a really good primer for reading Spin. Like the intro really helps frame... It's a lot of crunching, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'll let you finish crunching. Ah, uh, <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. But it was also a really good primer for reading spin. The introduction helps frame the new normal of this book in terms of our real life new normal, you know? And it's kind of crazy how Robert Charles Wilson was able to predict how humanity would react to a world-altering event. Okay, so on to the book itself. This story follows three friends, uh, two of them are twins, as they grow up after the October event. And uh, yeah, so they were just kids. And one night, they, while looking up at the stars, all of a sudden, without warning, the stars lit up really, really bright and then just vanished, gone, black, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and there's no explanation for it. And immediately there's like a bunch of prophecies, conspiracy theories that came out. And a lot of them were connecting this event to the Bible. Hmm, because you know, America, <sighs> it's just what we do. <laughs> Diane, one of the twins is really shaken up by this event. And she ends up joining this spin-inspired Christian movement. <laughs> it's a cult, cause duh. And then the other twin, Jason, he becomes obsessed with finding out what the spin is, like who or what could be behind it, what's causing it. 
and maybe more importantly, why it happened in the first place. Like, luckily, Jason is a truly talented scientist, and he also has the financial support of his already rich dad, who got mega rich off of the pandemic. I, I mean, the spin. And then there's Tyler, who is terminally in love with Diane, like, it's a thing. And he ends up going into medicine and becoming like a doctor. And his main role in the story is to show how the average earthling is just trying to live their life in this new world. And, you know, is there a point in continuing with your life plans when it feels like everything got thrown out the window? <laughs> you know, just asking for a friend. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this book really hit me at my resonant frequency. It it did take me a while to read, it's not that long, but it, I think it was because I was really taking my time through somewhat dense paragraphs, but they, they were full of stuff that I was really enjoying and enjoyed thinking about. Like how there became a generation of people stuck in what this book calls spin paralysis which very much correlates to a sort of COVID paralysis that we're seeing right now. And oh Lord, it also talks about how the CEOs are complaining about the economic impact of all this and like, uh, it's so frustrating and so real. And then all this while normal, not super wealthy people are just trying to make it to the next day. <sighs> yeah. This was an easy five out of five stars for me, and it will probably end up being my top read of 2022. It might also be my favorite current book ever, maybe? <laughs> like, I really wanna do a full deep dive reread of this, but I don't know if I have time. If that sounds interesting to you and you would be down to watch that sort of video, let me know and I will make time. I'm gonna stop it there because I literally, I just want to keep talking about spin, but I probably shouldn't, at least right now. Uh, yeah. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to my little channel here. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Do something nice for yourselves, like maybe eating a bougie orange from your local natural grocers. <laughs> Uh, do something nice for others, like maybe giving them a fancy orange for Valentine's Day. I, I don't know, I'm losing my mind. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I can leave you there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!